how I feel about remakes. Um, well, I'm involved with, I just did a remake of one of my films and I'm about to do another. And, uh, I mean, you know, it, it kind of saddens me in a way. You know, I mean, I really, I, I'm doing it strictly for economics. I'm not doing it, you know, I'm doing it, I care about the, the films, but, you know, uh, I just, I, I, it kind of, it kind of saddens me a little bit because I look at the people making the pictures. Oh, okay. I should really look about Maniac because I'm going to be more involved on, on the Maniac Cop. Um, it's, it's. You know, I look at them and I go, oh my God, you know, but they're not doing anything original, you know. I mean, I remember the joy during the period when I was doing Maniac and. And my friend Joey Zeno was doing The Prowler, and my Armin Mastriani was making He Knows You're Alone. Uh, Wes Craven did, you know, and, and Sean Cunningham were doing Friday the 13th. We all kind of knew each other. We, we rubbed elbows, and, and Sam was doing Evil Dead, and Romero was doing... I mean, one of the things I tell people on, on, on Maniac, the uh, shotgun blast I stole from the M&E track of Dawn of the Dead, because I was mixing the same sound studio. <laughs> That's how close all these films were war to each other, it's, uh, you know, Stuart was doing reanimate. There was an energy, there was an excitement we were doing. We weren't thinking about remakes or sequels or any of those things. We were thinking about just entertaining an audience. And I find it kind of, re you know, the other thing is I'm, I almost like if I was a filmmaker do it, directing a remake of somebody else's movie, I almost feel kind of embarrassed. I can't explain it. Maybe I'm wrong in thinking that way. But it, there'd be a certain amount of embarrassment that I didn't, you know, that I'm not really, I'd want to kind of hide my head a little bit because I think there's something about, I don't know, I don't know, I, it, maybe I'm just, my thinking is off on that, I don't know. No, you're right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, we actually, I don't think Stuart and I have ever worked on one of the, you know, we never worked on any of the other reanimated films I sent, I was contractually obligated to send in a, a a story for uh, uh, for Bride, Bride Reanimator, uh, and uh, Brian called up, and Brian Usna called up and said, "Thank you very much." Uh, you know, and then they made it. Then they made a different. They got hired somebody else to do the script and made it made a different movie. Uh, and I, I, Brian's a buddy and a true believer. Um, but we, we never worked on uh, any of those, and... Uh, well, I was thinking more in terms of you were involved with Reanimator the Musical, which was Oh, that, yeah, we, we, did, we, did, we, did, we did make a musical out of it, and, uh, and, and, and we tried to translate that. Uh, translating the gore to the stage was fun. That was, you know, you know, just, you know shooting, uh, you know, the first four rows wore ponchos. Did anybody see it? The first four, four rows wore ponchos, and we, you know, we, but we upped the laughs, you know, there was another way to do that story. But we actually tried, what was important to me, uh, I did the, the book edits, and what, one of the writers on the book adaptation, was that we told the story. What was important is that you, you know, you're faithful to, we wanted to be faithful to the story. I think they're going to remake Reanimator. We've been sort of fighting it for a long time, and we're not going to be a problem, but I think they're going to remake it. And uh, that certainly saddens me because I'm not going to get a piece. I wasn't in the guild when we made the first one. Uh, and I think it is mostly just for the money. And, and it, it sort of, you know, on the other hand, you know, I've made my living in this, built, in this business most of the time uh, adapting somebody else's work anyway. I've, I've been a Lovecraft adapter. And uh, we've taken terrible li liberties with Lovecraft, but I, I think the same principle applies. If you're that we, we've been talking about here, if you're faithful to the spirit, we, we felt we we loved Lovecraft, you know. And if you and if it's a work made on real, uh, you know, real respect and love, and, and and you know, if you're faithful to the in, in a a real desire to get to the spirit of the piece and to, to you know to, to communicate that you know that that's fine with me. If somebody makes a good remake of Reanimator and it's a good movie, then I'm then then it's fine with me. Uh, but just for this, mo most of the time I think they're remaking. You know, boy, they come and they go. You're not going to see the uh, you know you're not going to see the poster for the you know for the remakes of uh, you know of these movies. You're going to see the posters for the originals. You know because those. Those are the film. I mean, and that's so interesting too, because if you look at like history and film and stuff, by the 1930s, they were remaking all the silent classics. By the 50s, they yeah. were redoing the 1930s. 
Come the 60s, they were taken on the Italian neorealism films, the French films, Americanized them. Now today, it's all the grindhouse fair of the 70s. And I myself also fell into that. We were going to make it to a remake of Don't Look in the Basement three years ago. I had my script together. We had half our backing. We had our business proposal. Uh, met up with a uh, producer down in Texas who stole the whole thing, mm -hmm. wanted to reproduce it himself. And I just realized at this point, even though it never happened, that it was Jinx. You know, it's like stick to original content. We didn't need to make a remake. We wanted to do it lovingly. We wanted to make a great homage, you know, just as these gentlemen were talking about. But it, it, it just didn't happen to be in the books for us, you know. So we decided just to stick with the original content and let someone else do it. Most, most, of the, uh, most of the band filmmakers I know don't want to have anything to do with remakes. They want to tell original stories. Now, on the upswing, on the different end of the coin there, I mean, there are a lot of I mean, since there's so many remakes, occasionally one of them is really good. And occasionally you get a director that's a real visionary and then he ends up going off and having a huge career. I mean, sometimes I'm finding that there's a lot of directors trying to break in and they always start off with a remake or a reboot. Um, I mean, Zack Snyder is an example of that, the director that actually he's had a pretty good career based yes. on the yeah. Dawn of the Dead remake. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. So, so occasionally, it's, it's like occasionally they hit one that's really good. I just, want, I just want to tap on something really quick. It's not a, I just want to tap on something that you said about the musical. Yeah. And I, I was involved with Evil Dead, the musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I don't know if anybody saw it, yeah. but we were going through the same thing. Ten gallons of blood a night, soaking the first yeah. five rows. But when they came to us, <laughs> and they said, how do we do this? How do we make a stage performance out of something? And they wanted to be <coughs> messy and yeah. headless bodies. And we started turning it into... We're obviously not going for realism. You know, yeah. We're obviously going for more fun on this. So with Evil Dead, the musical, we had puppets that people would yeah. wear that were heads so just running around. And originally, for the eye popping scene, we, we built this gun that every night, like, they would get hit in the head and they'd go pop, and it would just shoot <laughs> this, this, this eye out into like, and it was like the contest, whoever caught it in the audience, you know. And, and, uh, <laughs> but to translate, but just, I just wanted to tap on that. And then one other thing, really quick, about not so much a remake, but uh, more of an updating. I recently got an opportunity, which was really cool for me, was I got contacted by Troma. And they just asked me to do a sculpture. And <coughs> what it was, was to age the Toxic Avenger oh, 30 yeah. years. Uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm sitting there talking to Lloyd on the phone, and I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, and I hung up the phone, and I was like, that's awesome. And I hung up the phone, and I just grabbed my tools and I went. And for me, to take something, because I had done the effects for four. I had done the effects for Citizen Toxie and that. But for me, to take a character that's not as much of a remake, but sort of an update, and to age something like that. The sculpture sitting down in my base was really cool. But to take Toxie and then throw 30 years of age on him to sort of bring him up to make it kind of cool for me. And uh, so that sort of sort of the remake topic, but I just want to throw that out. <laughs> and occasionally you have like a, a remake, like the Evil Dead remake, has Sam Raimi directly involved. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, he's apparently it's, apparently it's good. I haven't heard it's good. It's good. So, yeah. You know, we we remake the uh, the foreign. Uh, horror films all the time. They made, remade all the Ring films. That you know, I mean, we we do that all the time, and nobody nobody peeps about that. Uh, you know, well, hardcore they, Japanese horror fans do. Well, yeah, I mean, and, we, and they made a they made a, a you know a really disappointing remake of uh, what was it, The Vanishing? I think. Oh yeah, uh, yes. you know, yes. Yes. which is a terrifying, too. awful, the worst ending of all, of, of all film of all time. And you know, I mean, it you know. It, it, it either works or it doesn't. It's done for the right reason or the wrong reason. It's uh, it clicks or it doesn't. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to have a you know uh, a blanket universal opinion on that. Except you know, I'm I'm not comfortable doing it. Um, that said, Stewart and I did uh, do a body snatchers movie. Uh, you know the the you know and and it was presented to us as the sequel to the remake, uh, which is like. <laughs> You know, fourth generation video. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, it's like the sequel to the Philip Kaufman remake of the original, which is taken from Jack Finney's book, which is, you know, okay. But it was it was great fun to work on. You know, unfortunately, it was a studio film, and they, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, they, it came out. Well, lots of it came out well, uh, but it was it was that said, it was fun to work on that. It was really fun. But at the same time, you were. 
I almost don't consider that necessarily a remake. It, it's the same idea, but in a completely different context. He took it off of the military base and yeah. made it. I thought it was very original. Original. It was during uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and that's actually what it was about. Mm -hmm. right. you know. So I think what we're saying is you, you can uh, potentially take a remake as long as you apply a different idea. I mean, you look at back in the 80s, you had the thing of the fly, two of the greatest oh, horror yeah. films ever made. Both of them ostensibly remakes, but they really took the original idea and spun it off into entirely new directions. So it, um, and getting to what we were saying about Evil Dead, it's, you, know, you had Raimi involved. Uh, Wes Craven, who was here last night, was involved in remakes of two of his films, which came out better in my opinion than your general run of remakes. So I think sometimes if you get the original creator on board and you want to take it in a different direction, it can be, it can work. So just to play the devil's advocate on that one.